and a whole bunch of other ones. Thanks for joining us. Let's get to this. Today, we've got two special guests with me with the same company that happen to use Follow Up Boss. Remember, this is inside of the Follow Up Boss community. And we've got Pavel Stepanov. He's a CEO of Virtue Desk, runs a virtual assistant company that I currently use. I've been using them for a while. And he's bringing on Nino. What's up, Nino? Nino. What's up? <laughs> Hello. Nino is one of the VAs that Pavel's got out at Virtue Desk that uses Follow Up Boss to do a lot of the follow-up systems and functions as a CRM for them, uh, for one of the clients that they have. So we wanted to kind of take you through that. Uh, Pavel, you also run a real estate company, man, but tell us tell us on the Virtue Desk side, what, what's that all about before we get started? Sure, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Virtue Desk is uh, it's a virtual assistant company. Uh, we are located in the United States. Uh, however, our VAs are in the Philippines and uh, We've been in business for, it's our fifth year. And, uh, you know, we we actually train um, most of our VAs on many CRMs as, uh, and follow-up follow up boss happens one of them. So so a big part of our training and uh, we brought one of the VAs who's currently using follow-up boss with uh, one, of, one of the customers, uh, you know, and I believe it's for uh, lead generation company and also Nino has been using follow up boss for real estate companies before so that's why I wanted him to share some of the you know ways how a virtual assistant can help uh, real estate agents with follow up boss and uh, manage the back end of it I love it man well thanks for putting this together because yeah. a lot of people have questions like how do I start delegating some of the tasks for follow up and nurturing and and so we want to showcase that with Nino today. Nino, you've been using Follow Up Boss for both real estate agents for real estate and also for lead generation for a company, right? Tell us about right. that, and then we'll get into the slides. Yeah, uh, I was. I mean, before I uh, on my first client here with Virtudesk, I was already using it for real estate uh, purposes. So we basically nurture all our leads uh, through Follow Up Boss. Uh, we use it. Uh, to to uh, email them, to send in text message, uh, to uh, to set them up for a plan or a, an email email drip. So uh, we use it basically there. So if it, in case one of our uh, I mean my client would ask me to okay, Nino, you need to call this lead. So what I'll do is that because um, oh, follow up as boss is basically an all in one hub for messaging and stuff. So what I'll do is that I'll search for our lead's name, phone number, or email address, and it'll just magically pop up and uh, load up all of the history uh, from email, text messages, and calls would def would be there. And it's easy to just be up, uh, like it's it's just easy to be uh, updated or to know what happened historical to uh, your company. And with that specific lead, and yeah, I can easily easily follow up with them. All right, man. Well, let's let's get right into it because you put a little slide deck here for us, and then I have some questions too. All While right. I'm looking for the slide deck, can you tell me where you learned to speak English? Because it, you do a <laughs> you do a really really good job of it. Well, uh, we I mean it's part of our curriculum here in the Philippines. Plus, I do love to read books and watch English movies. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, Harry Potter. Nice. There we go. <laughs> I love that. Well, it, well, it's an English accent, but yeah, the grammar and stuff. So I, I really learned a lot from watching Harry Potter. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. That's a, that's a really <laughs> good, uh, good way of learning it. All right. Let me share. I found this one. And look, if you have questions in between, just go ahead and ask them in the chat or in the Facebook community. And then we can go from there. All right, this isn't a really long slide deck, but we're gonna go into it. And this is episode 12. We wanna just bring you into that. So tell us some of the main tasks in you because a big challenge for any business, solopreneur, entrepreneur, uh, real estate related or not, is, is really figuring out the tasks that we need to have this person, in this case, you, in this, this case, having to do the right things to help us with our CRM. So go through these and tell me how this looks to you here. On the dialer, are you just using it to do outbound or are you taking inbound calls as well right now? 
I do both inbound and outbound calls. Plus, I don't know if uh, anyone knows it, but you can also use follow up boss as an a sort of an auto dialer. Uh, as long as those leads are assigned to you by uh, like an admin of that subscription, you can uh, you can list or you can prepare a list and mark it, mark all the lists or all the leads on that list. And you can just give it a go and it'll automatically dial all the numbers from that list. Okay, perfect. And are you an admin inside of the CRM? Did, did, you, did the person you're working for set you as an admin? I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So mine as well, by the way, with the, the VA I have. So I'll tell you the VA that I have uh, or the two that we have for for the tasks, they're in charge of nurturing the leads. So they're in charge of going through the big database that we have of 100,000 people and going through and making sure that at least we're, we're not having them fall behind in any way. Do you do that as well, kind of nurture or no? I I, I was doing that for my previous uh, client. Uh, what I do is that there is a, uh, uh, a part uh, where you can set a stage for a specific, specific lead. And if you're going to be putting them on a specific stage, let's say, a, uh, let's put it, I mean, you're going to be putting a lead on a hot stage. Mm -hmm. Hot stage means that a certain lead is ready to buy a home, let's say within a week or within two weeks. Got so, it. Mm -hmm. do, are so, you in charge of, so that's, that brings up a good question. So, you know, one of the things that we do before we, we bring in anybody into our CRM is that we have, we have our lead categories and we have our tags all set. Do you, did you create these for your clients or do they already have them in place typically? Uh, they already have it uh, before I start working for them. So what they did is just, they uh, sent me a list of uh, like things to do and what are those stages are for. So, yep. And I just did it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, James had a question. He said, I'd like to learn a little bit more about the dialer. James, great question. You can turn on the dialer into follow-up boss. It's an added feature and you could just have it continue to dial. We, we use that all the time as well. So great question. Uh, and it does record the, the voicemails as well. Nino, do you record your calls? Because I know you're calling in California. Do you say, hey, this is Nino with so-and-so on a recorded line, and then you start your conversation, or how does that go? I, I do. Uh, you really need to stay, say the recording spiel first because uh, so that they'll know that you're, I mean, every call is being recorded. And yeah, and that's actually a one part or one point for follow-up boss because uh, you are managing tons of data, tons of leads. So uh, if, if in case you need to nurture, you need to follow up with them, let's say after two weeks, of course, it's like impossible sometimes that you, it's possible that you forgot what you've spoken with or what, what you talked about with that specific lead. So what I do is I listen to the recording and before I, before I make a follow up with them so that I'll know and, and up, to, up, up to date with them. Okay. And then James wants to know how you create this list for dialing. How does that work? Uh, there will be like a tab that will call, that will say people, and it will list all of the people, uh, from, uh, from your data basically. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you can actually filter, uh, there will be a, a filter, uh, portion there and you can mm -hmm. type your name. If those leads are assigned under you, uh, all of the leads should, uh, populate from, uh, from, from, from the, uh, from the space. Mm -hmm. It should populate all the leads that is assigned to you. You can mark him and then you should, uh, you can start auto dialing then. Yep. That's right. So uh, set it up under the people section. The filter will allow you to mm -hmm. choose you, uh, mm -hmm. James or whoever agent you want. And right. then just start the dialing session and it works that way. All right. Let's go into emails. Uh, are you also emails, texts, and messages? Are you, are you in a current system where, you call up Nino and you're like, okay, I'm going to call them up for the first time. Then, then if, if I don't reach them, I'm going to text them and then I'm going to email them and then I'm going to text them again. Do you have a system like that in place that I know Casey, Casey's who you're working with right now, the O'Toole brothers, right. do you have anything like that with them or, or is it different? Well, I had that with my previous client with Casey. It's actually up to me. If, uh, if, 
if ever I was able to reach the person who I'm trying to dial, uh, that's the only time that I can send them a text message or email if they agree. Got it. Got it. All right. So depending on, on how they come in too, because I know Nino, some of the leads that we get already agree to be contacted by text. So it's easier right. for us, but if they're coming in and they, they haven't been approved for that, that makes, makes a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. now when you email them, text them, the information is there. Do you text them through follow-up boss or are you texting them with your cell phone or a voice a voice plan that you have like through ring central or something like that. I do them all in follow up boss. All right. I love that. Perfect. That <laughs> makes it a lot easier for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. It is. All right, cool, cool. And right now you're reaching out to, so there's a great question right here, but right now you're reaching out to, to leads for a company that works inside of the real estate world. Right. But when you were reaching out to, to the consumer, how did that work? Because I have a question here. It says, I assume the VA or ISA is not licensed. How do you handle questions relating to specific properties? And this may be a question for Pavel. Pavel, how do you typically address that and tell oh. your VAs? Yeah, well, it depends on the state. Some states are actually very strict on licensing for the ISAs. And uh, what, what our customers do, they actually... Um, tailor the scripts uh, for the ISAs if it's a specific regarding specific property, then they would, uh, you know, they can simply either send a link to the property, which is not really answering any questions, or what they can do, they can say, uh, let me connect you with a license agent so that you will be able to, he'll, he'll be able to give you more specific answers or push for, an, push for an appointment. Uh, I know some states like Texas is very strict on licensing, and what most of our customers did, what I noticed, they tailored the script of an ISA to be more of a, like a survey. So it's not specific to real estate, but uh, you know, like if you have any questions, uh, then obviously if somebody has any interest, then uh, what ISA does does makes a connection with a licensed agent to to answer those questions. All right, I love that. And look. Just so the people that are listening in, we had we had Robert Slack on, what was it? I think about a month ago. And he has a team of 30 plus ISAs or VAs. And obviously he runs the largest team in, in the United States, but that gives you an idea of the power of VAs. And obviously you do have to train them well, right? And these are only some of the tasks that they do. Part of that training involves the scripting, right? The tonality, what they should say, what they're allowed to say, what they're not allowed to say. It falls on you. So great question. I, I love that question. And Carol, can we send mass texting through follow boss? No, we can't. But you can certainly add agent legend or call action. And through those, you're able to, to do mass texting in, in some ways. Lori has a question. Are you familiar with Canadian guidelines? More specifically, Ontario. Pavel, are you? I know you're an attorney, man. So are you familiar with those? Um, we have uh, clients in Ontario currently. And I would like to know more specifically what she's referring to as far as guidelines, because we are familiar with. I think she's referring to yeah. what the VA or ISA can or can't say. Um, what our custom. Yes. Well, she says VA. If it's an ISA regarding ISA, what a VA can or cannot say, again, uh, the best way to do it is to uh, check with your local board and see what specifically they require because boards are differently. But what our customers do, they tailor the script. So again, it doesn't sound like it's an ISA typical call, like prospecting for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. But if it's reaching out to the bid database, again, it's more of a sounding like an assistant who's get, who's uh who's there to connect licensed agent with the consumer. Um, I know one of the biggest part in Canada is you cannot do, uh, there's like very strict privacy laws in Canada. Yep. And you have to ad ad adhere to those and specifically outbound calling um, can only be done, I believe, to your database or people who contacted you first. You cannot like uh, do like we do in the United States where you just call out to people uh, mm -hmm. randomly. It has to be um, somebody who initiated contact with you first. So at this point, your assistant or your ISA pretty much uh, calling to set the appointment with uh, with a licensed agent or you know to check what's what's going on. 
I love that, man. And I, I just took a snapshot of this. I'll put it into the follow-up boss community because uh, Nino, I know you do a lot of this. I have a question for you on this, on this specific one right here. Well, you're setting up five, five appointments for in a four hour shift. What type of appointments are those? Are those from the database or are these outbound calls, inbound calls? Where are you sending the appointments typically from? Because uh, uh, right now I am currently working with our with MyLink Solutions past clients. So I do have a da uh, data that was given to me by, uh, by KC. And uh, what I do is that I search it in follow up bar. So it's it's still within uh, the database. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what I do is that I'll ask those leads if in case they're still interested of resigning, resigning up. And what I do is uh, I set them up using Calendly. And I don't use follow up bus as of yet as uh, for for scheduling an appointment. So I still use a Calendly and I just note it in follow-up boss and you're you're setting appointments from the data that's already inside of there so those clients yeah. right right uh-huh that so was my in. that was my main question on that all right can you take me through your typical day when you jump in let's say you have a four-hour shift today mm -hmm. uh, where do you start and take me through that process sure so yeah i basically start on uh, and logging in <laughs> through our tracker. And then mm -hmm. after that, um, I, I mean, it's incomplete over there and the EOD report is just a snippet mm -hmm. of a EOD long list. For end of day report, yeah. Yeah, good, uh -huh. thank you for that. Yeah, end of day report and start of day report. So right. mm -hmm. very good. So you do get these reports when you have a virtual assistant. So you know that they're actually doing things. Yep, so yeah, and then after that, I will be, um, uh, starting up all of my, the applications that I will need. Uh, that will be Calendly. Uh, I also have Time uh, Converter I, and Follow Up Boss and Google Sheets because I will base my tasks or my work for that day on that uh, Google Sheet that Casey or my client provided me. Nice. And, mm -hmm. and then after that, uh, I'll work with the sheet and I'll search for uh, the leads information through Follow Up Boss. And then, yeah, I'll just call them right inside follow-up boss. And yeah, so what I've said earlier, if that specific lead agrees to be contacted through email or text message, that's the only time that I can set it up for that. So Got it. I, all right. So let's say you get a hot lead. All right. Let's say you get a hot lead. Obviously, you work with Virtue Desk, but let's say you get a hot lead, Nino, and, and it's ready to go. Do you typically try to merge the calls with the agent or or the person that's running the business, or do you set an appointment for them to call back? How does that typically work? Uh, I actually don't. What I do is that I email uh, Casey or send a Skype message to them. Oh, nice, nice. All right, so um, that's a good protocol on our end. We have because we have this running too on our end with Virtue mm -hmm. Desk. We have uh, two, and what they're doing is they try to merge the call right there instantly because we find that for, in, in some cases, it's hard to reach the consumer again, right? right? So we're like, hey, you're in, oh, you have questions? Got it. Let me connect you to an agent that handles that area uh, with the Tristan Associates brand. And then just go, just hold for, for about 20 seconds. And then it rings like five of our top agents. So they usually pick up within the first, within that first, uh, pickup. So it's really good, really fast. And um, the, the section right here, let me move it on my section. All right. What are the benefits of using follow boss as an ISA? Can you number some of those Nino? Cause there's a lot of systems out there. <laughs> and I know that virtue does trains their ISAs in practically every CRM. So help me. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, as I mean, personally coming from a different uh, industry before I joined fridge desk, uh, it is really important that I went through Virtudesk's uh, training because it's really comprehensive and uh, I really learned a lot in terms of the CRMs and everything about our real estate. So yeah, one of the CRMs that we did discuss is Follow Up Boss and uh, uh, this is basically what we do uh, in Follow Up Boss as an ISA. So. As what I uh, as what I uh, as what we have over here, it is definitely convenient to access records because you don't need to go outside or to to pull up another application. All yeah. you need to do load up this lead. 
all of the messages, uh, messaging history will be there. Notes will be there from inside your company. Let's say uh, your client left a note for that specific client. It's read, readily available for you. You don't need to ask them anymore. If there is something that you need to clarify, then that's the only time that you, can, that you need to message them. I love that. And Neo, you know, if you find that somebody says, hey, I'm ready to buy or I'm not ready to buy or whatever they say, once you find their motivation, do you change the tags? Do you add smart plans? Do you add anything like that? Uh, right now I don't, but in my previous client, I put it, I put them on hot. Okay. So you do, you do set all that up. Okay, good. Yep. And just mm -hmm. to answer that question on my end, the, the VAs we have on our end are trained on follow-up boss and Pavel's team at Virtue does, does do like very, very good training. They have a whole system on the back end of videos for all the main yeah. CRMs. One of those is follow a boss and they also help with scripts. Now there was a question that says, what about expires and for sale by owners? I've tried a variety of different VAs on that. And I find that the best use for an ISA is the database, your own database. And um, I find that when it comes to expires and for sale by owners, if you can help it, you know, have real estate agents call those, have yourself call them instead. Um, but when it comes to those, you can definitely use a VA or ISA, but it's going to be a lot harder to find that right one for it. Stick to ISAs, making those, making those outbound calls for your database, inbound calls from signed calls from online leads, right? Those are great. And then for any other VA task that you can handle, like we have a whole bunch of editors, graphic design work. Pablo, what have you seen on that end, man? On what specifically? On what people on, use VAs for? On, yeah. What, what have you seen VAs used for at the highest level? Because, I mean, you own, you own the company. Well, um, when I first, uh, when I was selling real estate and... Um, uh, that's how I ended up actually owning Virtual Desk. I, I started with an ISA uh, for my own uh, real estate business and she was doing primarily calling expires and FISBOs. But again, she was a, a good power machine and basically scheduling me an appointment. But again, I'm the kind of guy that um, I just need to get in front of a prospect and I'm good like face to face. So some of those uh, you know prospects, again, they're getting bombarded by a bunch of uh, calls from um, you know, like for sale, if FISBO goes up in my market in Bellevue, Washington, it's going to be 15, 20 agents there. So, um, but again, uh, your VA would only can get you an appointment to be there. Again, closing that person is going to be on you. But uh, what I've noticed that the biggest success people have with VAs is having an executive virtual assistant yeah. who is both doing calling, uh, answering phone calls, calling the database, uh, doing graphics, video editing, and pretty much um, running running the operation of your business. That's the where the most useful case is going to be. I like that. I yeah. agree with you, dude. I, I agree. I think you hire an executive admin yeah. on, on this side of things, and you can use them for anything because they're highly trained and versatile. So that's definitely how we do it. Uh, how do we get a hold of you guys, Virtue Desk? What's the uh, best website? Yeah. Yeah, go to uh, myvirtuedesk.com. It's myvirtuedesk.com. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be shared in, uh, in the chat box uh, for everybody to see. And go ahead, schedule, schedule a demo call. And uh, one of our uh, you know, consultants will, will get, a, get a hold of you and, and schedule your demo call to discuss. All right. And uh, how do we get a hold of Virtue Desk? Let me type it in there. I got a few questions here. There's a good question for... For you, Pavel, how do I get those scripts, the scripts that you train your agents on? Is that something uh, that you give out or is it just when people sign up? Well, well, we train, uh, the, the scripts are available in our Virtue Desk Academy for our VAs to learn. Uh, usually it's uh, scripts from Tom Ferry, uh, you know, number one coach, and uh, we use those scripts. However, uh, this is more of a, like a generic script and it's best to tailor the script to your own market. Uh, that's what I did when I uh, first started using uh, an ISA. I gave our, I gave her Tom Ferry script. Yeah. But what I did, I did a lot of pre foreclosures. So I trained her myself, and I wrote my own script for pre foreclosures, the way to get their attention, and the way to, you know, to basically have a higher rate of conversion. So 
you will get a generic script, which are easily available, but it's best to that you tailor them to your own market, to your own personality. Correct. You know, so because again, if all imagine imagine you're a homeowner and everybody who's calling you sounding the same, what do you think? Which one are you gonna go with? You know, you're probably yeah. gonna go with the one that sounds different. <laughs> that's very true, man. Everybody sounds the same here, and that's why. That's why I love uh, talking to Nino. I want all of my VAs from now on to watch all the Harry Potter movies. That's, <laughs> that's like a prerequisite. I'm going to be like, okay, first question. Have you seen all the Harry Potter movies? And if they say yes, then I can go to the next question. <laughs> I think. Um, dude, I haven't. Oh, dude, what the hell are you doing on this call? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, Nino, I like you. Okay, you're you're on, you're good on my book. Uh, great Thank job. There's probably a ton of questions on this, uh, Pavel. I think this was not enough time. <laughs> so <laughs> probably not. Yeah. I think we we should do yeah. a part two and a part three. Part two. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do. Let's set up a part two and then a part three. I'd like to. Nino, you know, I'd like for you to take us through how you use follow up boss. Like, I want to see the back end, right? I want to see uh, how you dial. You don't have to dial, but uh, show us what you do on the back end, the notes mm -hmm. that you do, then the notifications. Take us through all that on the next round so that you can be prepared for that. Okay. This is kind of like an introduction for everybody so they can see what's possible. Yeah. Uh, I think that next one's going to be that. And then I'd like to kind of script with you on the next one so that we can showcase those scripting uh techniques that pablo was talking about so people can understand it and then david um you know what let me send you a link to my youtube channel because it shows you everything that i'm using right now for uh streaming that way you can take a look at it except my internet's now crapping out so give me a few seconds i have the whole thing outlined for you guys and you know what, on that end too, all of my stuff on YouTube is edited by, I have two full-time editors that are VAs and then two graphic designers as well. So you can, you can see here, there it is. I put the link up there. That's one for my vlog. Nino, you rock, dude. I'm very impressed. It's my very first time talking to you. Now I want to steal you away from Casey. <laughs> I'm actually very impressed by by your tonality mm -hmm. and by the way you talk. So uh, I'm Thank serious. Very so much. very, very good job. Good job on that. And Pavel, thanks for doing that, man. Thanks for being on. You answered some questions I didn't have answers to. So <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And then this is recorded. It's going to go into the Follow Up Boss yeah. YouTube channel. So and then we'll see them again in part two and three. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, much. guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye-bye.